Hello, welcome. Brian here from quantlabs.net. Just wanted to uh, finally show you that I've got my implied volatility working. I'm going to walk you through the code very quickly. Again, the script uh, in MATLAB will be made available to the public. It's part of my backbone to my system. I just like to be transparent what I'm doing. So let me show you what I'm doing. Okay, so if you've seen this script, my previous video, getting Yahoo data, uh, and it grabs a lot of info. I've gone over that in the last video, no need to waste that. But what we're doing is we're gonna try this out on symbol uh, IBM, okay? Now, before I start, just wanted to let you know uh, that I'm using this MATLAB function, implied volatility, uh, using the black model for future uh, data or options data. Um, and here's my example here that I'm using. So you can get all that info uh, here at this uh, exact sub code, really. The only difference is how I uh, generate all that data that's required. So let me just get to that point. So I'm going to run this script. Off she goes. She's going to grab some data from Yahoo, calculate some EPS, APR, um, some other stuff. So specifically, I've shown this probably third time in videos where I've got uh, various uh, uh, chain, option chain data from Yahoo. We have our expiry dates. Uh, we have our, um, we've got our call put header right here. We've got our, uh, what else we've got? We've got also our call and put data uh, really around the, the CP headers. So. Um, that's what I'm using. I'm using pure option chain data based upon the uh, contract for the next month uh, that has the highest volume. Okay, that's one with the most liquidity. Now we're just trying to calculate um, the implied volatility under the best conditions, of course, the most liquid contract for the following month. Now we can also choose our periods if we want to look out two months, three months, uh, maybe even a year. Hey, why not? Um, so we've gone over that enough times, uh, but uh, let me just uh, get to the code now. Uh, so set up a breakpoint uh, just before it starts using that example code I showed you uh, using that uh, um, this implied volatility on the black model. Okay, so. I think we hear there's a little green arrow. Um, there's a chain data I just showed you. Um, so I'm gonna step through this. Uh, now here's one other thing that I've not included. This is the data uh, code. Uh, I've shown this actually before to grab the uh, risk-free. Now the only difference between this and previous is I'm using a uh, three month. Before I was using uh, weekly, I believe it was, but uh, let me just continue. So we're able to uh, calculate the risk-free rate using that, grabbing that data from uh, FRED, the um, Federal Reserve of, uh, I believe, St. Louis. Okay, so let's get on. So we calculate our asset price, we calculate our strike, we calculate our rates, we calculate our rate is a risk-free rate, uh, format output to calculate our settle date, which is now, and our next maturity date, which is the expiry date of our next contract, okay? So let me walk you through that. So we got our settle maturity dates. Now, um, before we continue, uh, all this is explained in this uh, example code here. Um, and we're just coming up to this step right here. Uh, so I'll let you figure that out. I just want to show that, hey, it works. And this is important because getting this to work was not an easy task, um, especially for looking so we got our put call, um, and then uh, we've got our pricing, which we're using our call, and our puts for that particular contract that I was telling you about. Now here's the, where the magic begins. Uh, that uh, implied volatility, okay, uh, which is this one we just talked about. I keep talking about it, and this one right here, we're just about to run this function sit back relax and watch how you calculate the implied volatility there we go there's our implied volatility just like that so now we have that available to us on that particular option data 
Um, obviously, uh, we need whatever equity we use, there needs to be option data to calculate the implied volatility. Otherwise, it's no use. Now, the thing is, um, uh, just so you know, uh, I am looking at Yahoo uh, Finance data. Uh, I, you know, I'll go on about this in the next uh, uh, video. But the key here is uh, because of the amount of um, Yahoo requests I put out to, to the Yahoo Finance servers uh, per day, uh, there is uh, a limit. So uh, because of that, I could have uh, equities of maybe 100 uh, in one category I'm interested to calculate the long and the short. The problem is, is that it's not just one request per asset I'm looking at, it's two. So let's say I have 100 assets in a particular market sector, that's 200 requests to Yahoo. Now that can be a bit of a problem because I'm going to easily exceed uh, the limit that probably Yahoo Finance servers are going to allow me. Therefore, I will at some point need to switch over to um, something like IQ Feed, which obviously because I'm paying for it, I can hit up their servers unlimited. Now the reason I bring up IQ Feed, so if I want to calculate the IQ, uh, the implied volatility, because you become a, an IQ Feed subscriber, guess what? You are able, quite easily able to just pick off a field for the implied volatility for that asset. So I don't have to do any of this wonky stuff I'm doing here that I'm showing you. So I'm just letting you know uh, that will be eventually tweaked. But for now, this is how we grab it from Yahoo. Okay? Talk to you later.